What is Cumulative Annual Growth Rate, or CAGR for short? You've landed in the right spot because in less than one minute, you're going to have seen the formula as well as have a decent understanding of how it works. Then afterwards, I'm going to go on to give you a useful example uh, that really helps to reinforce this concept. So I hope that's worth a like on this video as well as a subscribe. That means a great deal to me and um, it helps other people find my content as well. Now on to the good stuff. The cumulative annual growth rate takes the ending value divided by the beginning value. So that's the ending value divided by the beginning value. Once you have that resulting number, um, order of operations is important depending on how you're, you're calculating this. Don't forget those parentheses. Um, so once you have that resulting number, you need to raise it to a power. And that power is simply one divided by the number of years or the holding periods. From there, you subtract one from the result and times by 100. This delivers the cumulative annual growth rate as a percentage. There really aren't too many steps to this formula, but what does this number mean? Well, if you took the starting value times one plus the CAGR, then that resulting value times one plus the CAGR again, repeated for the number of years, you should end up with your ending value. If you didn't follow that, that's okay, and I'm about to show you an example in more detail. So let's use an investment that goes from $100,000 to just over $133,000. And let's say it moves that, that much in three years. So what is the CAGR for this example? So we'd first take the ending $133,100 divided by the starting value of $100,000. Then that number raised to one divided by three years. We then subtract one and times by 100, and we end up getting 10%. So the CAGR for this example, or the cumulative annual growth rate is 10%. Let's now look at how this rate of return would build up over each of the years, the three years. Starting out in year one, you have your $100,000 investment, times one plus that 10% CAGR, uh, and you end up with $110,000. Now, of course, you carry that down to year two. You take 110,000 times one plus 10%, and you're gonna end up with $121,000. Now, for the third and final year, that 121,000 times one plus 10%, and you're gonna get that ending value of $133,100. So the CAGR formula jumps through these steps for us. If you're working on a return calculation over many years, it's much faster than breaking it down year by year. Also, although the rate is consistent, the CAGR at 10%, the nominal growth or dollar amount is different each year. In, in the example I've given you, thanks to compounding, it's up $10,000 that first year, $11,000 that second year, and $12,100 in the third year. So the CAGR formula factors in compounding values. It's considered a geometric calculation. I hope this short explanation helps. And for the next step, what's the difference with geometric versus arithmetic returns? Depending on your data, one might be more useful for calculating returns than the other. And for a breakdown between the two, go ahead and click on the video I've linked to and if it doesn't pop up on your screen, I'll link to it down in the description below. So check it out. And once again, I'd really appreciate it if you just tap that like button. Thank you.